Make your next with Squarespace. Oh yeah, like I am optical viewfinder. It's just the ultimate tool for photography. What? Wow, this is heavy, but damn it feels good in my hands. Hi everyone, Samuel here. Welcome back to another video and um, today I want to talk about uh, a camera I bought almost a year ago. Um, I bought a lot of cameras in the past two or three years but I think this whole journey uh, made me come back to a, a system or a camera, a type of camera that I'm very familiar with and uh, that is a DSLR. So I started my photography uh, career using Canon DSLRs, uh, I was using Pentax DSLRs before that. Most of you know I use GR cameras, little compact cameras for street photography, but I still enjoy having a bigger camera around. So last year in November, I bought uh, the Nikon D850. What in the Nikon is this? And I bought it with the money I got from selling my Leica Q2 because I was using Leica for a year. I was also using a Leica M. And I want to share my thoughts about, you know, using Leica for a year and why this satisfies my needs more than any Leica did. And of course, everything I say in this video comes from my own personal uh, opinion and experience. So please don't take this the wrong way. Uh, I'm also not going to compare, you know, Leica and this camera, you know, Nikon or DSLRs and Leica, like they are the same uh, thing you know they are not it's, it's like comparing uh, you know apple and oranges as they say but i still think that i have uh, some things to say that you might uh, not have considered before <laughs> but we will do that at the end of this video um, before we get to it i want to give my five uh, reasons why uh, i ended up um, going back to a dslr and this camera in particular so reason number one is I wanted to have an optical viewfinder and I was shooting Leica for a year so I, I had a nice optical viewfinder slash uh, rangefinder, right? So I used uh, the Leica M262 which had a nice rangefinder but it turns out that or I realized that I like seeing exactly what I'm getting and with the rangefinder you have to guess a little and get used to the parallax shift so I wanted to have a nice viewfinder that I can trust. Um, that's one of the reasons why I went back to DSLR and specifically to the D850 because I heard from, from friends, uh, shout out to uh, Spicy Meatball, uh, Josh Edgus. He's the reason why I actually heard about this camera because he was using it for, for history photography uh, a while ago. And then a uh, funny little story, he infected me with this idea of using a DSLR and I infected him with the idea of using Micro Four Thirds, you know, I used a little Panasonic, now he is using Micro Four Thirds, so we, you know, both inspired each other. So shout out to him. So yeah, it had to be the D850 because I also heard that it is, uh, it has the biggest viewfinder of all prosumer uh, DSLRs. I know that there are many great EVFs that have a resolution that is, you know, even sharper than the human eye can see, but there's still something about looking at a screen through your camera. If you have an OVF, an optical viewfinder, it feels, because you look on the DSLR, you look directly th uh, through your lens, it feels more like using a you know, director's viewfinder or you see exactly what the camera is seeing and not what the camera interprets for you, right? Because even though an EVF shows you exactly what you're getting, it also shows you, uh, you know, a preset, um, more, the contrast the camera wants you to see and then it's just yeah it's just not the real thing it's just easy to my eyes you know I sit on the computer all day I don't need to look at a screen all day too and you know I use my GRs which have a screen and that's a different thing you know I, look, I don't look at a screen like this I look at it like here so when I use a camera with a viewfinder I don't want to I really don't want to see a screen anymore so uh, it has been very re refreshing it makes sense and you know, it's, I don't want to say it because it's, everyone says it, but it's kind of like shooting film, looking through an optical viewfinder. 
this is also why I like DSLRs because it's the whole analog experience, even though it's digital. But you know, it's 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 the OVF, it's the it's the diodes, it's how it feels. Um, but I'm talking too much. So OVF important for me, uh, and this has a great one. Second reason I'm really liking DSLRs nowadays, and especially this camera, is uh, the ergonomics. Because uh, I shot Leica for a year, and I had an M camera, and it never bothered me that I didn't have a grip. But after a year, I kind of felt mm, my fingers are a little hurting. I don't know, but going back and forth, you know, between my Fuji cameras and Leica, I always felt I needed a little grip. And then once I touched this camera, I was like, oh, this is made for my hands. And I used to shoot a Leica SL, which you know is a DSLR style camera, but the grip is like straight and it wasn't that comfortable. And even though this feels almost a little heavier than the SL, it doesn't feel heavy because of the grip. So this is uh, something I really like. Uh, then the robustness of a DSLR, obviously it's built like a tank, it's weather sealed. There's one picture. And there's two. Like I said, in all scary environments, there's no brand I'd rather trust in Pentax. Thanks very much. With some mirrorless cameras, it always feels like you're, you know, when you're pressing on a pad on a uh, on a laptop. Like if you press really hard, you could, you know, hear a little crack. And this is how I feel with some mirrorless cameras. You know, you press them too hard, and you hear something cracking. And with the DSLR, it's like everything is very tight. Speaking of Leica and user experience, uh, Chris, come here. I have a Leica user here who shoots on an M. M6, right? Yes, M6. So, and you told me uh, on a different day that you don't really think about a grip. No. So why and how do you feel about the ergonomics? Uh, it's, uh, it's not really, I mean, it doesn't bother me anymore. When I first picked up the camera, it kind of bothered me. Um, but it's like, if you just use your, your thumb on the winder, you put your thumb under the winder, and then uh, you know, just grip it with your fingers. It doesn't bother me as much. I can still shoot it with one hand, and it's not that much of an issue. You have other cameras, but I do. What do you appreciate? Uh, what you like? The build quality. <laughs> <laughs> the build quality. Okay. It's made like a fine watch. The craftsmanship is just out of this world, bro. Everything just works. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but what it does have is smooth operation. It's a smooth operator. ライカ選んだんですか初めてライカ Q2を使った時に撮れた写真がすごく艶っぽくて綺麗でもうそれに心を奪われたじゃあその写真見てからライカ好きになったそうもともとニコンを使ってたんだけどその出てきた写真が全
M11 持ってるじゃんスミ,スミロックスも持ってるそれは高いだろう,う<笑>いやー金持ってませんよ<笑>貧乏ですまあ美味しいお肉売ってるから多分い,いっぱい稼いでる<笑>これお肉屋さんって言ってないんじゃないのでも多分あのあテロップ出る,入れるお肉屋さんでーす大阪の牛屋なんていうんだっけ名前牛屋生肉店住吉大社で牛屋精肉店というお肉屋さんをやっていますぜひ行ってください本当美味しいから It's very good、yeah. めっちゃね、とんかつよく食べてるね<笑><笑>めんどくさいなこれいちいちいけてないやろ絶対ミラーレスの方がやろうえちょっと古いなこのテクノロジーえー、おおいいですねでもこれこれどうやってズームするのタッチじゃあちょっとフ,フーストインプレッション教えてファーストインプレッションはでかい,でかいマジで<笑>重い、But、You don't wanna carry it every day, right? No, it's too much for me、um, I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's a big boy's camera You, you have to play with a small, small boy's camera Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> mm, this is sweet Just like my sweet, the sweet memories I have of shooting DSLRs For relaxing times. Make it Mitsuya Saida time. Make it Mitsuya Saida time? Is it time? Yeah. Cut, 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 cut. Anyways, let's continue. So, reason number three is familiarity, which means、uh, I grew up shooting DSLRs, so coming back to a DSLR does feel like coming back home. And yeah, it's just how. I remember when I had my 5D Mark II, I was never thinking about other cameras, other systems. I just had my, you know, boring brick of a camera, which felt good in the hands, and then had my 35mm, and what else did I have? Not much. The 35 was my main lens, and now I have a DSLR again with a 40mm. So it's kind of like back in the days I was, how I was shooting.、Um, so that's a big reason, just feeling comfortable with, with the camera. It feels familiar to me while still being、um, a little different because it's Nikon. I never shot Nikon. Nikon, Nikon sucks. So, for me personally, this is a huge plus.、Uh, most mirrorless cameras, I have to get used to them. And with this one, I got, how do you say, comfortable, confident, quick. Yeah, that's my <laughs> boring reason number three. Now for some more relaxing times. Okay, reason number four is fun factor. So, okay, the joke doesn't work because we have to leave the family mart. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cut. Okay, we are now at 7 Eleven because family mart kicked us out and my joke didn't work. So I changed my shirt as you might have noticed and I just realized I bought long sleeves but I wanted a t shirt. Shit. <laughs> Anyways,、um, reason number four is fun factor because、uh, DSLRs are just fun. You have so many lens options, and I'm using a manual focus Voigtlander that Voigtlander makes for DSLRs, for, the, for Nikon, for Canon, and they make this lens look like an old Nikon lens, as the Ultron 40 F2. And I put a little lens tap on it, so it's kind of like using a Leica lens, you know. By the way, if you want to know how manual focusing works on the D850,、um, I have this manual focusing lens which has、uh, a distance scale. So it's, you know, it's like you're used to shooting on a Leica M lens. And then when you look through the viewfinder,、um, you have basically what the M6 has. You know, the, the M6 has,、uh, for metering, it has these two arrows and then a little circle, right? And when the exposure is right, it's a circle. On the D850, we have, you have that in the left corner of the finder.、Um, so when you're focusing, you have to、uh, follow the, the focus direction. And then it lights up a little circle, and that means、uh, you're in focus. So it's a little weird because you, I have my focus point in the middle, but I have to look down in the top left corner to see if I'm in focus or not.、Um, there, I kind of developed the skill of、um, just seeing the circle in my peripheral, peripheral view, you know? And also because I got this magnification eyepiece.、Um, It's, it's not slower than using a rangefinder, I feel like. 
um, because the viewfinder is so big and I can, I can see, physically see uh, the focus changing, um, I often don't even use the focus indicator. So that's how I use many focusing. It's a lot of fun. This lens is on my camera all the time and um, I yeah, rarely miss focus. So if you're scared about many focusing on a DSLR, I mean, it depends on the camera, but on, on Nikon cameras, um, it's, pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty reliable. And if you, use a, if you have a big viewfinder, then you can often just see the focus changing. All right. Yeah, it's just, it's just a fun system to use. Um, they are fast, they have a loud shutter sound, but it's kind of satisfying. Flip up screen. Uh, the screen is really nice on the D850, really, really nice. The images always look super sharp. And um, yeah, there are lots of customization options. You can have fun straps on it. By the way, don't ask me where I got the strap because uh, like most of my straps, uh, I made them myself or my mother-in-law helped me make them. So you can buy this one. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of using the D850 like a Leica. You know, I walk around like this and it's, it's not, yeah, it's a big camera, but it doesn't wear me down. It's, you know, it's summer in Japan right now and I feel fine. I mean, I sweat a lot, but <laughs> uh, I still can wear this camera without any problems. And uh, because of the image quality, it, it is also worth it, in my opinion. So, and for everything else, I have my small GRs, you know? So that's number, number four. Now I'm going to change back to my shirt. <laughs> okay, welcome back home. Uh, it got a little chaotic yesterday night and I couldn't finish uh, filming my reason number five, which is uh, value for money. Because DSLRs obviously are not being made anymore, or we, we're not sure. I mean, Pentax does still produce DSLRs, which I think is awesome. I hope they continue doing that. Um, if there would be an optical uh, viewfinder mirrorless camera, then, you know, we would not have to make this video um, because it's mostly about the OVF for me. Anyways, uh, so back to, to value for money. You can get DSLRs, uh, old DSLRs, even not that old DSLRs for very cheap because a lot of people transitioned over to mirrorless and they're, they're selling all their gear. So you can find lots of DSLRs online. Uh, and my D850, for example, uh, you can find it um, for maybe a little under two grand, which is still a lot of money. But if you consider that this camera costs like four or five thousand dollars, euro, uh, something around that when it came out, um, two grand is not a b b uh, bad deal. And uh, I found this camera in, in a local camera shop in Hamburg for around uh, 1600 euro. And it even came with the uh, battery grip. Uh, and the shutter count was just uh, 40,000. So I think I was very lucky and the condition was great. So I just couldn't, yeah, not buy <laughs> the camera. So when I think about it, you know, I sold my Leica Q2 even for a little bit of a profit. And I was able to buy this camera, the D850, uh, this lens, the Voigtlander 40mm f2. Uh, I bought a Tamron 45 1.8, a Nikon 28 1.4. And all of these lenses and the camera to combined were still cheaper than uh, the Leica Q2. So in terms of what you're getting for your money, uh, DSLRs, uh, right now it's a great time to invest in the DSLR. Is a DSLR future-proof? No, <laughs> because there won't be any updates or upgrades coming for your camera if you buy a DSLR, like this camera. I don't think that Nikon will produce um, a newer model. But as long as I can find these online, and this is also a camera that is a pretty complete package, I don't really know what I would want. Uh, at the moment, I'm pretty satisfied. I don't need anything beyond what I'm getting here. And many, lots of things are getting expensive nowadays. So do you really need the newest Leica? Or you might end up being pretty happy with shooting? older cameras that are still very capable. And to be honest, in terms of performance on image quality, uh, this definitely beats the Q2 by, by not a little, but quite significant jump, I would say, and especially low light, um, dynamic range, 
and uh, yeah the sensor of this camera i didn't talk about the sensor of this camera enough in this video but i hope by seeing the sample images i showed you throughout this video you can get a sense for it but you know, anytime i look at my raw files and i do a little bit of adjustments i'm always thinking like wow this is this is crazy this is amazing um, so i'm very satisfied when it comes to uh, the colors and the, the dynamic range and stuff so anyways Good value for money is uh, reason number five. So now that you know my five reasons why uh, I picked up the D850 or DSLRs in general, uh, I want to talk about my experience using Leica and compare uh, the D850 or DSLRs with Leica a little bit and um, excuse my journey, my thought process here because I'm going to talk about things that might not make sense to you. But to me, they do. First of all, uh, let's compare the Leica M. Everyone loves the Leica M. Rangefinder, optical viewfinder, manual focusing, compact body, build quality. It's just <laughs> out of this world, bro. <laughs> mm, top notch, can't deny that. But the more I used it, the more I was asking myself because I was also stumbling upon these little hurdles or these um, limitations like when I'm riding a bike, you know, I always have to pre-focus my camera first and close the aperture enough so that uh, I have uh, a right enough focus range so that I can take photos one-handed. Uh, but I would often miss shots because I just, it's just very hard to use it like I am one-handed. Um, and then on top of that, um, you might be very good at using auto, uh, menu focusing, using the focus tab, but I'm sure you still can focus fast enough to get uh, shots quickly. For example, um, shooting photos of your children. Uh, my son, for example, um, he moves around a lot these days. And if I, when I use my GRs, they are too slow because autofocus is too slow. If I would use um, my Leica cameras, I don't have them anymore, but I, uh, they would be too slow. You have to just go out there and put in the work. And yeah, maybe my, I'm lacking the skill of fast autofocus, but if you have a kid jumping up to you or hiding behind the curtains and then suddenly showing their face, uh, you can be the fastest manual focusing photographer. You might still miss most of your shots, uh, but using uh, the D850 with my uh, 28 1.4, uh, with an, which is an autofocus lens, I don't have that problem anymore. I get sharp photos of my son and I get photos that I couldn't get on a Leica M. It's just impossible. And I doubt that most of you who are using M cameras are fast enough to do the same. Um, not saying that you couldn't, maybe you can, then, you know, kudos to you. But the point I want to make is just that um, the Leica M in particular is a very, it's a camera for a specific purpose. It's for, for zone focusing, for, for street photography, for photojournalism. Maybe not really for landscapes, you know, maybe not really for... Uh, I know that some, some people are using Leica M's for weddings, but it's also the, the thing is, why are we using technology that is hindering us in getting the results, right? Yeah, you use a Leica because of the simplicity. And I used to be, like, uh, I used to be one of those people who say, you know, less buttons is better. Less buttons means less distractions. And my Nikon D850 has a lot of buttons. If you look at the back, there are many buttons. Uh, most of them I don't use. But you know what? You can just ignore them. Because <laughs> I use my dials for, for changing my, uh, the basic exposure settings. There's not, I don't never go into the menu, I don't need to. So it's just a, it's just a mental thing, you know? You have to, I think people, it's, it's the same with like min minimalism. I don't want to get into a rant about minimalism, but I had a little minimalism phase and I've seen many people, especially on YouTube, going through that phase. And it's often the case that you start to become very extreme in it because you think, oh, I just got to get rid of things. So then, and then I will feel better. And then I will feel more content or uh, comfortable or uh, focused maybe 
And some people do acquire a new sense of clarity. Uh, but to be honest, most of it is in your head and you need to do some work within yourself. If you clean your room, it might feel good to you on that date, but the next day you make it, you, you, you know, it, it's all dirty again, then what's the point? You gotta, you gotta clean your room again. But maybe you gotta start treating your room differently or using your room differently. I don't know, does it make sense? So for me, I thought that the Leica cameras give me more focus and enjoyment because it's, you know, just the bare essentials. But then simple things like changing white balance or exposure compensation, sometimes they, you know, depending on the camera, of course, but sometimes it was a little um, slow and um, it just didn't make sense to me why simple things like that couldn't be done more intuitively um, in a modern camera, especially if it's digital. Yeah, I mean, Leicas are cool, and I know some great photographers that use Leicas, of course, who's that saying? But I always feel like people who like using those, it's because they really enjoy that very specific yeah. experience, and that's cool. But when I'm shooting, I don't, I actually want the camera to be, like, to be invisible for mm -hmm. me. I don't mm -hmm. really want to experience the camera. The, the, the less I experience it, the better. Mm -hmm. So I want to yeah. experience the environment. So for I don't want to bash Leica too much here because if, if all of your care is many focusing, small lenses, rangefinder, then there's no alternative, right? I get it. But to me, most, most to be honest, most of Leica for me is just um, image. It's the legacy Leica has. It's, you, you connect, you, you, you buy a Leica and you immediately think of like Robert Frank, Bresson, Winogrand, and you think, oh, this guy used a Leica M, so it must be a good camera for street or journalism. And it is, of course, and it was, but we are now living in 2022 and we have even smaller cameras. And I think the benefit of a Leica was that it was compact, right? It was a new kind of camera. Small, quiet, lightweight. Small 35 millimeter film, uh, small lenses, and you can carry a camera and shoot handheld. That was revolutionary. That was, you couldn't do it before. Leica or Oscar Barnard literally had to invent a camera um, because he couldn't bring a camera on his trips. So now we have all these small little mirrorless cameras or co compact cameras like the GR. Um, I wonder if these photographers from back in the days who were using Leica, would they still use Leica? Because if it's about compactness, then there are smaller cameras. And when it, when it comes about, you know, getting the shot quicker, easier, faster, then there are faster cameras. If it's about only about how the camera feels and the tactile experience, then maybe there's an argument to be made that people who appreciate that, that might still use Leica. But, but I think most people who are using Leica nowadays are using it because of the experience of using it, of how it feels. But these cameras are more for the soul, and this is again, shit like a photographer say. <laughs> and be honest with you, uh, there's, uh, you also use it because there's the legacy behind it, and it gives you a little bit of street credibility, right? Look at this. What do you think? Nice. Um, but you know, I also ha have to admit that I'm someone who always has to um, have their own thing. If, if, if the majority of people is doing something, then I don't like to do it. It's something within me that uh, I just don't like following the herd. Um, so maybe this is a kind of rebellious act of me buying a DSLR, not saying that, you know, it's kind that I'm unique in that sense, because I got influenced by other photographers and colleagues of mine. I know that Lukas isn't using a DSLR anymore, but he used it for a long time. And regardless of what everyone said, you know, he stick to his uh, Nikon D4, I think. And um, I admire that, uh, that you can just be confident and comfortable with your gear. And I hope that this video also makes you appreciate what we have already. And if you're eyeing a Leica camera, maybe really think about it. Why do you want one? Oh, do you really need one? That I think most people agree that you don't need one, but lot of, lots of people want one, right? I was the same. I wanted one. And I'm glad for the experience. It was fun. We, we didn't even talk about money and price, and I think 
the way Leica is pricing the cameras is just getting ridiculous at this point. Yeah, it's a little pricey, but so are the moments I capture. Oh, look, a silhouette. It's obvious that they're treating their brand as uh, some kind of luxury brand, which is fine if they want to do that. But I, as a photographer, feel that Leica isn't really doing products for me. They're doing products for people who, who, who care about the legacy, who care about um, prestige, who care about uh, the image of Leica, and maybe about the rangefinder and the, the camera itself. Um, but for the price... Show me the money. <laughs> okay, so sorry, I didn't want this to be a rant, but uh, just wanted to share my thoughts. Hopefully you appreciate uh, me sharing my honest thoughts. Anyways, go out there and shoot with whatever you have. And if you have any questions about uh, this camera, let me know in the comment section. I'm definitely going to talk about it and use it in the future, uh, in future videos. I just shot a uh, project in Kyushu with my friend Alex that was uh, shot on this camera. And I'm excited to talk about it more in the future. Um, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!